Hello everybody and welcome back to my vlog, to my channel and on the bench today we have one of these. This is a, is, well the, the sort of brand name that goes with it is Welly Lang. Wavy, wavy Lang? Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's a stereo ampli amplifier, it's based on the LM 1875s that you got here. And what I liked about it when I first saw it was the fact that it's got a bridge rectifier um, in the kit. And so all you need is a transformer. Let me just zoom that out. All you need then is the transformer. You need a positive and negative. They say you can go up to 22 volts, but that gives you 61 volts close to. And the maximum for an NM1875 is uh, 60 volts positive and negative 30 volts. So I'm using a 18 volt transformer here. It's 120 VA. And so I'm center tapped to the middle for the virtual ground. I'm going to positive and negative. Um, it doesn't really, really matter which way you put those around on the inside. Now, the only thing that I've changed here is everything that comes with this is this. But I didn't like the look of these capacitors. Let me just go in. I didn't like the look of the capacitors. You get these nice green capacitors, the same moves on them. I'm not sure if they are or aren't, but let's say they are. And I've just stuck in these gold ones because I think they look nicer. Uh, another nice thing about this circuit is it has a protection circuit. That's the 12 volt regulator for this and it has this protection circuit which is all nice. This is a UPC 1237 and it gives you a delayed muted uh, turn on. So when you first power on if there's any sort of pop or anything like that on there uh, if you're going to hear that through your speakers you're not going to with this because there's about three and a half seconds. So you turn this on three and a half seconds later the relay kicks in and you've got output to your speakers. Another nice thing about this particular circuit, this IC, is that if it detects any, any more than one volt DC going through the circuit, it again, it shuts off the relay. So your speakers are disconnected and you can repair the fault. Else it could be a case of it will just, because um, it's DC going into the coil, it will just burn it up. And you can end up spending a lot of money on a new cone. I found that out for myself. It cost me £81 to replace the cone in one of, one of the cones and one of my speakers. Not very good, especially when you can buy a board like this. If we take a look at the screen now, you can buy a board like this with this kit on it for £10, £7. Uh, what that will be in, let's have a look, dollars. Let's see if we can just save that and it will show us in dollars. There you go, look, $12. All right, and uh, in euros, let's say. So great, you can actually do this, isn't it? In euros, we got it there, it's 1166. I'm gonna put it back to, I can't go through every country, it's just that these ones are here. All right, so 10 pounds. You gotta pay the tax on it, I believe, so, you know. But that's the way it is. Uh, I do love these um, inductors that you get on there. There's the kit. Now you can buy it pre-built. Cost you a few pounds extra. And um, but where's the fun in that, eh? I like building these things up. Now we're going to a quick look at the specifications. I'm going to tell you now this. Uh, this is from the from the um, data sheet for the LM 1875. Um, and here operating voltage AC 12 times 2 up to 22 times 2 like I said it's like 61 volts and the maximum the maximum is 60 volts going in I'm using 18 volts I had um, we have to do that on the calculator uh, but it's not quite 60 I'll stick it up on the screen what that uh, equals to and here it looks like this so this is the this speaker protection and the um, the voltage regulator on, regulator on there. There's the two uh, circuits, individual circuits for the actual uh, left and right side stereo, and there's the power supply. So that's all pretty good. Uh, and that's that's basically it. There's nothing really much else to look at apart from there's one thing here. On when you see that on the board, you see here right hand side 
would indicate that that would be the right hand side there, the ground, and then the left hand side there. Well, I wish they'd do the wiring, which is white. That should be the red one, really. But never mind, it doesn't matter. So, without further ado, let's put the. Um, I'm just going to put that down there, where is. Well, as you, you can see this power up. Oh, no, you can't. There we go. Um, so I'm just going to click this down. Hopefully everything's okay. You see the little red LEDs come on. Click, and you see the relay jump across there. So that's that. That's on now. And um, I'm going to just go in. I haven't actually started off. What we got connected onto this. Uh, so we want the audio analyzer. Just give it a few seconds. There we go. All right, now I've only got one channel connected at the moment, and that is the left channel. I've been playing around with this particular circuit. I don't know if you can see it quite faintly. There's an L there, and that indicates something to me. So let me just go with this channel one. Uh, there's our range, 50, average, uh, 50 steps, may as well I'll just take a peek at this. Uh, this is on point three volts RMS 0.3 so let's just see what we get here okay so it doesn't look too bad uh, it's not quite down in that um, not quite down in that level that might be suggested on the screen there but there's a bit of a caveat to this this is not able to see as low as Arta and so I will be doing this again. We'll be swapping this over in this video to Arta to check that out. But there's a couple of other things I wanted to see. Uh, we'll do that one next. Uh, we'll do the frequency response here and just give that a quick little run. Oh, well, let me just. No, oh, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's just, like a, it's just so I can adjust these to three up, three down. Okay, let me just adjust these here. And, uh, oh, thumb, do as you're told. I just adjust that there. So you can see that's not terribly bad. A little bit of a drop off on the, uh, but you don't expect it to be, you know, absolutely flawless, this. Yeah, a little bit of a rise when it comes to, where are we there? We're at 15 kilohertz, uh, 1.5 kilohertz, sorry. Uh, it goes up a little bit, a bit brighter there, and it starts dropping off here, but that's 20. So we're on the, on the line there for 20, it's going all the way up to 50 uh, kilohertz there. So again, not too bad at all. Let's have a little look at the um, square wave. There we go, chunk one. Get a single on the 1K, yep. I'll just drop this down to 100K. Hit that. Yeah, not too bad. Remember, we did see the drop off in the frequency response, so you can't expect it to be perfect. And I'm going to go straight to 20 here. That's not bad. Seen worse. Seen worse. It's not bad. It's not bad. And uh, let's just have a little look at the power versus the um, THD plus noise versus power. You always got to keep in mind as well that this system can only, it can't see down as far as what Arta can. But it gives us a good idea of uh, what we're going to get bang for the buck. So we've got load impedance of 8 ohms. I'm not going to try it on 4 ohms. I didn't even check to see if this was going to be happy running on 4 ohms. I do believe you can because they're LM1875s. Um, but we'll just do it like this for now because most people have got that. Um, we're just looking at one channel at the moment and I want to be able to show you the other channel. So that's 1.6, that's less than 1% distortion, that's 35 watts. Uh, that's that's reasonable, that's pretty good. That's, you know, it's, it's got there one channel all by itself. Why shouldn't it be that? Why shouldn't it be good? All right, now I want to be able to show you the other channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to disconnect the power. You can hear the relay just switched across there. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to do this as quickly as possible. Now, there's a reason why I have only done one channel at a time. And that's because when I show you, 
this one. It doesn't matter about the ground, they're both connected together on those two middle uh, terminal connectors on this board. So now we have the other channel. I'm just going to switch this over to here. So my indicator on there was the left. So I'm just going to leave that down there. And let's put that back on again. Yay, I love that little thing there. All right, so that's that channel. Now, first of all, we I just look at the scope. All right, so we got it here on the square wave, 20 hertz. Let's do a single check on that. Okay, that looks fine. Yeah, that looks just the way the other one does. Uh, we're gonna go to, uh, let's go straight to 200. Oh, that says 220. Put a zero back in there, it's gonna make it easier. Do a single on there. Oh, I didn't go up very high on the other one, did I? Yeah, never mind. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. We'll do it on here. Uh, let's go to 1,000. So we're at 2K. Okay, still, yeah, doesn't look bad. Doesn't look bad. Uh, let's go straight to 20K, shall we? Yeah, yeah, a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of uh, deformity, it's not as quick. Our top is going up there, but that's, that's still not bad at all. And just for anyone who might um, wonder what 10K was like, let's say, a quick little look at 10K. Doesn't really seem to be much of a problem. I don't like the way this is like this, but let's have a look at um, the frequency response. So that's the one from before. All we're going to do now is run across there and see what this is like. Ah, now, now we can see there's a major problem. And what this major problem is, is this thing is switching itself on and off. So it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off, it's on, it's on. All these patches down here, anything close to that zero is on, this line is on, everything else is off. That's no good. Yeah, that, that is uh, no good at all. Um, we can't use that. But interestingly enough, in there, it didn't really show much of a problem. And this, if I were to run these two together, that's why I didn't run them two together, is it would screw up. It actually upsets the way the power goes and it starts coming back on itself a bit and then going back on itself and going back on itself. Um, so that's a bit of a problem. Now, maybe I should, should I should I stick the other one on the other channel so you get, nah, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can see what's going on with this one. And if we go along on the frequency response as well, I'm going to leave this the way it was set for the other one. There's no adjustment on the um, input powers or anything like that. It's just the way it was for the other one. Yep, distortion above 25%, so it cuts it out. So you can see it's an absolute fail. Weirdly enough, though, when you plug speakers onto it, it doesn't sound too bad. Well, maybe you've got to have it turn up really loud, but that is no good. And that these are the original LM1875. So I'm going to turn the power off this now. These are the original LM1875s. I have two been delivered today from RS comp Components. So these are original um, LM1875 Genuines. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap those out on there. And we're going to try this again. So I shall be back in a bit. Okay, so now we've got two new LM1785s in from RS Components. I'm going to put this uh, power down. A little red LED, that's all good. So far, so good. Alright, so now we've got speaker output. Let's take a peek at the screen and see what we get now. Um, let's, uh, we had have frequency responses all over the place, wasn't it? So let's, uh, let's try that again. Let's try that. Yeah, 
No, there's an issue because I can't see anything on the output. That's an issue. Why can't I see anything on the output there? I don't know, 20 hertz, we should see something. We should see it coming up like this, close to 20, close to 30. But we're not seeing anything. Rooms. We don't want to happen what happened before. Let's put that back on again. All right. Ah, oh. God, I don't like this. Get by that stop button. Yeah, no, something's amiss. Something is amiss. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check my connections and just uh, make sure everything's okay there. Right, so I've, uh, well, I just went over the solder joint. It's not quite all the way through the holes, the back ones. Uh, on these aren't 1875, so let's just see if I've made it worse. So far, so good. that way from the transformer uh, right um, so same thing start run the test come on give us something ah oh, here we go here we go okay Ooh. oh no 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 it looks good because of all this like this look so if I start bringing this down so how it should be. We're going to see what it really looks like. There we go, pretty much like the same as before. But this is on the one, I think it's on the one that wasn't working. I've not changed the output there at all. So the last one we were looking at wasn't working. Let's have a look on here, so we'll see. Yeah, look, it's all over the place. So now that one's working. Goody, goody. All right, let's have a little look, see what it looks like on here then, because uh, we can see what it was like before. And uh, I'll check the other channel as well. Okay. Now again, I've got to say that this is, um, the noise floor is higher on this because of, you know, this can't see as low. This is a 105, minus 105 um, dBr here. So this is where our noise floor is, where when we measure an arter, we'll get to see actually what it is like that. So it was just to check to see if it's working. That seems to be doing what we want it to. So let's do a, uh, we didn't do that on the other one, did we? This is left from it on the other socket. We didn't do it on uh, this one. So what did we get then? That's was quite good. So, 0 0.182, let's do it to where it crosses over. I think that's a good idea. So that's 0 0.962, and we've got 35.3 watts out of it. So let's have a look, see what this does now. Uh, 0.7. No, we haven't got anything in between, have we? Uh, sort of, well, go back. 0.7, we've got 33.27 watts. Alright, so what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to connect up both of the channels. And we can see what happens there. Yep, with our eight times, so let's. Might as well just pull that out like that. Alright, I might need an extra piece of wire. Which I have here.
I don't know if you can hear the noise in the background, but it's the microwave. No, it's not. It's the air fryer. Doing me a jacket potato. I'm not eating. And I'm going to want this. Right, so let me just... Extend that a little bit there. I want both grounds here to connect onto this. Uh, will that fit both of them on there? Probably not. But I'll never mind. Get a good grip of it and um, I'll have this one on here. I'll this one can just go on there. No, no, you can go on there like that. Goody goody, none of those wires are touching, no. And then I'm just going to connect up this one onto here. So now we'll have both channels on the go. Okay. Right. Just double checking everything to make sure nothing's going to do anything untoward. Let's do a quick test. Ah, we'll do the uh, frequency response first. Puts the least amount of pressure on. We should have both channels work. Oh no, 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 stop. We've got to set it onto both channels. And run. Oh well, I mean, uh, a little bit, a bit apart from each other, but I don't think that's going to be. Uh, I don't think you made to tell them. But that's going to be a little bit apart from each other. Um, just trying to see what 20 hertz is. There it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're getting uh, 0 0.2 against 0 0.13. So it's uh, 0 0.07 out from each other. Yeah. Yeah. Who cares? Uh, we'll do this. No, we're not. Is there any point doing this? No, yeah, there is. Of course, there is. Uh, we can have a little look at this, see what this one comes out like. Let's do both channels. Um, 100 watts again. Let's just see. What do we get? What do we get? What do we get? We got. Oh, come here. Come here. We have 0 0.7, 33.2. Holy moly. No, there's a bit of a difference there, isn't there? I expect that one was going to come up anyway. Um, not a 0.7 there. No, what's the difference between a pair of them? Uh, well, order of magnitude difference on the... When you look at the uh, distortion, I'm not sure why that should be so different like that. And... Uh, At the same voltage, I mean, uh, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Do we do this on there? So let's just run them both. Okay. You got to remember as well. This isn't. Um, I mean, normally when we look at the THC, like in art, we look at it at 1K, don't we? Uh, so what this is showing us is on both channels at the same time as well is what it's like across the rest. I mean, we could look at it at 1K and art, or we could go to put the, uh, the signal source in at 100 hertz. But this just shows you across it, but we don't have as low a noise floor on this. So really, this would probably all be a little bit lower, but if we just look at the THD, look, that's nice, that moves down. Um, all pretty respectable, but we can only take this as a guide. There's nothing dodgy going on, is what we may as well say on this. And then look at the THD on Arta because that's going to give us uh, a lot better resolution on that. Uh, yeah, I don't expect to see anything different from the scope, to be honest with you. We run this like this. A little bit of differences there. That's just that little bit of it. extra uh, power. Um, that's at 10 kilohertz. Let's go to 20. Yeah, not really a great deal of difference to be reported there. Uh, let's go down to 
100, as we know, 1k is normally pretty good. 100. Yeah, no, they fall into line quite nicely as we start going down the frequency then. Uh, we'll go loud people speakers around about 50 hertz. Yeah, very good. And then we're going to look at 20 just because we're here. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's not too bad at all. I think this represents like 1 dB. Uh, so, that, you know, that's not too bad. And it's nicely in line as well with each other. A bit weird though, isn't it, how we didn't see the fault of the other one in the square wave. But there you go, so that's that for that. I'm going to switch this over to Artibon. I'm going to get someone to eat first. This video has taken quite a bit of time. Um, but I think it's worth it because, yeah, this is going to be a nice little bench. There's something here for me to be playing with for testing. And it's already got all the protection in it that you're going to want. So I'm not going to kill any of my speakers off. Uh, if I'm messing around with preamps through this, but let's uh, let's see what it's like with Arta first. But I'm gonna take a break because I need something to eat. So Arta, where is it? Yon is here. Let's turn the volume down on this and plug down the plug. Little red light. Wait for the relay. Cool. And now we can have a little look on our uh, see what this is going to be like. Bum, bum, bum. Mm -hmm. um, go. Oh, wrong one. There you go. So we're on the 180 here, not the 160 where we normally are. So that looks a bit high. Uh, so we can see our 50 hertz and 100, 200. Down it goes. Like that. Like, might take that off there. Yep, so that's for the power off. Power on. All right, now let's take a little peek at what we got. That was just switching over the um, speakers. Let's start going up. I'm going to suggest that I'm on the wrong one. Yep, good possibility. Easy enough to remedy. Turn the power off first. And put the Tommy Light onto this one. And connect on to this one. There we go. Yep, let's put the power down. Let's wait for that relay to go across. Okay, I'll start turning up. Oh, that's much better. All right, so we can see over here, THD, THD in the noise. And we'll go. That's 10. Push it, push it. Three, three, whoa, that jumps up a bit there, doesn't it? Okay, so round about five, four, six, four, one. So point, near enough point, uh, near enough one percent there. That looks horrible, that doesn't it? All right, so, you know, that's probably about the best we're going to get out of it uh, with the Arta. Let's just put that across and we can see all sorts of going on around these. Not quite sure what that's all about. But it's probably, you know, we're going to gain some noise. It's probably still not bad. It's still not bad. We were already seeing 105, wasn't it? Noise floor near the ones. We were already seeing this sort of area. And up. And now we get to see all this down here, but to be honest with you, are not going to be able to hear any of this. This isn't going to make any real difference. But it's quite nice the way it drops off as well. So, yeah. So, that's that. I think that's uh, probably not too bad a little kit. I've listened to it and it sounds okay, it sounds really reasonable. 
Um, I don't know what else to really add. All I can say is for the money, for £10 something or $12 or €11, Euros, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good little setup. Pretty good, you know, with all this that you've got here and the protection side of it. And, you know, um, yeah, I think it's pretty good. That what I would say, though, of course, is if you are going to buy one of these and you think it might be just ideal, just as a little tiny stereo setup for, for me for the bench, because I don't have um, anything plugged in. Well, you know, I've got my um, the, the, the wires, the output uh, wires are here coming into here from the back of my computer sound card. I could use the onboard sound card and plug it into this and then have the speakers coming out of here. So when I do video editing in the big machine rather than my laptop, because the big machine's got more hard drive space, uh, then I can actually hear myself. So, yeah. So for the money, bang on. For the fact that one of, and it's not just that one either. I actually, I bought two of these. I must have been having a drink that night because I actually bought two of them. And um, both of them have got one faulty on this one. Actually, there's an R, you see that? I mean, the right one works and the left one was working on here, but now they both work. So that one's actually faulty as well. So what I'll do is I'll put a couple of genuine around 1875s on, on this one and get that working. And then, uh, and then see what's what then. Just cause I've, I've got them, I've ordered I think half a dozen or something uh, of the things. So there we go. Right, have you got this far? Sorry it's been such a long video, but it's been in my viewpoint, it's been worth it, and I'll uh, catch you in the, in the next one. Bye for now.